Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Fantasy News. I'm your host, Daniel Daniel, and in today's first and foremost news, Shadow of the Conqueror is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and other outlets. I will have a link to buy the book in the description down below. I just want to give a shout out and congratulations to Shad. It's amazing to see another YouTuber on here achieve their dream of, you know, becoming a published author with Michael Kramer and Kate freaking Redding narrating the audiobook. I'm jealous. Getting into the rest of the news, Netflix released its first look at the Witcher adaptation, and wow, it looks pretty distinct and good. I'm more curious than ever. Maybe this is just because he clashes with my vision of Geralt so much, I'm very willing to admit that, but Henry Cavill looks a bit odd to me. Still good, and I am very much so looking forward to this adaptation. It's probably my second most anticipated adaptation, honestly, currently in the works. In terms of looks for the characters, they look good. I'm not going to say they look entirely book accurate, but they damn sure look good. But for those of you who are saying the fact that Geralt only has one sword on his back is not book accurate, you're wrong. He has two in the games. One in the book. Get it right before you complain. I would get more into this, but Elliot Brooks did a wonderful deep dive into these images and the captions posted along with them, and I don't want to spend five minutes on one story, so link to her video in the description down below if you'd like a diehard fan's deep dive into this full release and all the little teases that are in there that are giving away maybe small hints for what might be in season one of The Witcher at Netflix. But Elliot, I will say I do agree completely that Siri does look a bit older than she should to me. And I especially like what you caught in the logo. I actually wouldn't have caught that because apparently I'm blind. And in I just saw it now late well editing news, Brandon Sanderson submitted the first part of Stormlight 4 to his editor. I'm very excited to hear that and apparently he's starting on part two. So it's safe to say that the first part of Stormlight 4 has finished being written. Very excited to see that. Brandon Sanderson is obviously one of the most popular authors, not even just within fantasy right now, just in general. So I'm sure plenty of people will be hyped for this. And with the results and positioning that I will not spoil of Stormlight Archive on the r slash fantasy top fantasy series of all time list, I'm imagining many people are crazy excited to see that his work ethic and crazy writing pace has not slowed down. Thank you, Brandon, for being, you know, amazing at what you do. The early reviews were released for Stranger Things Season 3, and those reviews range from it's really good to it's the best season by leaps and bounds. I'm always a little bit hesitant to fully believe early reviews because typically they're pretty careful on who they choose let review their series, but to make such a bold statement that it's the best by leaps and bounds tells me there's got to be at least something there. So I'm optimistic, and I cannot wait to watch Season 3 of Stranger Things. And in more adaptation news, an animated Gremlins prequel has been greenlit over at Warner Media, and I am confused who this is for, but all right. Don't get me wrong, I like Gremlins, but I don't really want to see an animated Gremlins prequel, to be honest. This seems like a franchise that would have like a Ryan Reynolds-led, even funnier reboot now, not a animated one. I don't know. That's just my weird opinion on that. And in hardcore fantasy news, r slash fantasy did release its top fantasy series of all time lists of 2019. I already did a video breaking this down, link in the description below, but I would recommend checking out the list yourself as I only went over the top 50 and there are 129 entries. There were some real surprises in there and Brandon's domination of the genre becomes more apparent than ever. In finally a direct reaction to the backlash the end of Game of Thrones received online, George R. R. Martin has come out and said, the internet is toxic. He claims that basically while well, fandoms have always had different it seems that they are exacerbated by the internet. And my response to that is, yeah, George, that's, that's how that works. Everyone's angry always now. Welcome to 2019. I agree with them that it kind of sucks that reaction seems so insanely polarized these days. But hey, it's just how it is, and the reaction was what the reaction was. But transitioning into uh, adaptation, this was bad all around, all bad. No one liked this. I'm glad it's not happening anymore. Fantasy news, the Hellboy sequel is apparently not in the works after the first one lost so much money. And I'm gonna guess that some of you didn't even know that another Hellboy movie was made. Yeah, not, not, not really great. That one did not do well. Universally, not, not liked, not enjoyed. 
And in conflicting with other sources news, it's being reported by a New Zealand paper that indeed massive parts of the upcoming Lord of the Rings adaptation will be filmed within the country. Previously, Amazon has said that no, filming will take place in Europe, but now, now I'm just not sure what to believe. The articles do state that this is confirmed news and that huge swaths of the TV series will indeed be filmed in New Zealand. And if that's the case, great, I support it being in New Zealand, but I'm a bit confused by Amazon's direct announcement before that no, it will be taking place in Europe. There is an extremely long history between the production of the original Lord of the Rings trilogy and the subsequent Hobbit trilogy linked to acting unions and production companies within New Zealand. There's an entire deep dive on it. I'll link to the description down below that is very interesting. Basically, it's like politics on the level of Game of Thrones, but you know, movie business stuff. In oh my God, I'm so excited. News, Andy Serkis has been tapped to be in the upcoming Batman movie. This is going to be created by Matt Reeves and will not have Ben Affleck as the Batman. Ben Affleck will not be a part of this production. This indeed will be the Batman movie that Robert Pattinson has actually been cast as the infamous Cape Crusader for. The rumor, which I want to make sure this is clear, the Andy Serkis role is still a rumor, though a likely one, has also been stated not to be a motion capture one, which I'm excited for. Andy Serkis is a brilliant actor and while his mocap work is pretty much unrivaled, I love what the guy can bring to just live action roles as well, and I feel like this gives him more room to shine in ways that he has not before. Andy Serkis is a brilliant actor who should not be underestimated. I'm very excited for this, and I hope he is given a role he can really enjoy and play with. In, I think we're actually over a hundred upcoming adaptations news, an animated adaptation of a Chinese sci-fi novel called The Three-Bodied Problem has begun development. Within the article, it's claimed this is China's biggest sci-fi novel, but I couldn't quite verify that as being 100% true, though the book, although the story is huge, undoubtedly. Receiving rave reviews in China and America, this seems to be one of the adaptations that is most likely to get a lot of attention and success down the road. Meaning the source material, not the adaptation that hasn't even been made yet, but my phrasing there is terrible, so of course I meant the source material it's pulling from has received rave reviews in America and China, not the actual adaptation that hasn't been made yet, but I felt the need to clarify, so here's my clarification. And I'm actually just really excited to see this one join the ranks. It stands out for several reasons, and will definitely be one I pay attention to. In YA news, Henry Cavill has joined Millie Bobby Brown in the upcoming Enola Holmes adaptation, a YA story centered around Sherlock Holmes' young teenage sister going out and solving mysteries. Neat! And in the final bit of fantasy news I wanted to cover today. D&D, the now infamous showrunners on the Game of Thrones adaptation, will be at Comic-Con answering questions. The fandom has had a reaction like you'd expect. People memeing online that they will be destroyed by fans, ask questions about how and why they ruined the Game of Thrones show, pointing out examples of their ego, etc, etc, etc. Well, I do agree the quality of the ending was entirely these guys' faults, and it was rather bad. Ah, the internet's reaction to Game of Thrones has been all over the place, from threats to actors and producers and writers involved with the show, to petitions. And on the brighter side, really great charity work. But am I interested in seeing a fandom sling mud at people who are obviously egocentric assholes? No, not really. I just don't consider this entertaining. I consider it exhausting at this point. If you're one of the people who gets off on this kind of stuff, great, have fun with it. But I'm not going to touch on it more than this, and that's really why I managed to bring up this story. I don't plan on covering whatever happens in that Comic-Con panel. I'm more interested in the news we will be getting because fantasy news should be positive, damn it. It should be a good, fun, refreshing part of your day where you get excited for your upcoming adaptations and book releases, damn it. And on that note, I'm gonna remind you to check out Shad's book, Amazon link in the description down below. And please, please oh please, have a good day. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Amazon affiliate link if you'd like to support the channel here and order some books I've reviewed on the channel. I mean, Daniel Green has reviewed on the channel. And hit the Patreon if you'd like to support in a more direct way. Have a good one, y'all. Peace. And I wanna give a special shout out to two new high tier Patreons, Lucas Thurston, which that's a really cool name, and Dubious Zo Zinx. Dubious Zo Zinx. I think I got that there. Um, and I also wanted to take a special moment here at the end for those of you who are keep listening, who do stay to the end. I wanted to personally say thank you to everyone who joined the Patreon after I announced that I'll be putting out some of my own writing up there. It really meant a lot to see that there are people who are interested. Yes, it did add a lot of pressure. I'm not going to lie. Uh, suddenly, I was way more nervous. 
but it also meant the world to me to see so many people actually cared and wanted to see what I was going to be putting out. So thank you, and if you stuck around to the end, I appreciate it. But without getting too emotional, have a good one, y'all, and thank you. That's all I can really say. Peace.